Well, thank you to Chairman Graves and to my colleagues for the opportunity to address you today. Uh, the work that you do on the Transportation and Infrastructure Committee is essential to keeping America running. The reauthorization of the FAA is a critical part of this, and I wanted to take this opportunity to voice my vehement support for keeping the 1,500-hour pilot rule completely intact. Uh, this mandatory training requirement was put in place following the crash of Flight 3407 that happened in my district in uh, suburban Buffalo in the town of Clarence, New York. Uh, all 49 passengers on board, in addition to four crew members and a resident of the home at the site of the crash were killed. We can never get back those lost souls, but we must do everything in our power to prevent another tragedy. As you know, the law requires airline first officers to have 1,500 hours of flight experience to earn an airline transport pilot certificate. In, in addition, it allows FAA to give flight experience credit towards the 15-hour flight requirement for specific academic and military training, further enhancing safety. Now, since these training requirements were implemented, there hasn't been a single American commercial airline crash, and we want to keep it that way. I'm here today because there is a movement among some to make changes to these requirements, and it must be said unequivocally that no business decision should ever come before public safety, period. And when Americans book that plane ticket to work or to go on a family vacation, we need to have 100% confidence in the airline and its pilots. I know the airline industry is facing the same challenges as every other industry in, in serious workforce shortages. But loosening life-saving qualifications is not the place to close that workforce gap. The healthcare industry is facing the same challenges, but you wouldn't trust someone to operate on you who doesn't have the requisite skills or training. And I know there's a big push from regional carriers to allow flight simulation training to count towards these hours. It's just not the same as real life in the air flights where you know your safety and the safety of everyone on board is dependent on the decisions you make. There's no way to truly simulate how your mind and body responds to in-the-air challenges. We all remember the shocking and heroic story of pilot Sully Sullenberger. He landed U.S. Airways flight on the Hudson River after bird strikes took out both engines. All 155 passengers were saved and survived. They called it the miracle on Hudson, but it was, not, it was much more than a miracle. It was because Sully was an expertly experienced pilot who knew how to make difficult decisions in the case of an emergency, and his training took over to bring everyone to the ground safely. Computer training cannot accurately prepare you for a life or death decision on the air. You wouldn't let your 16-year-old who's mastered a NASCAR video game go out and drive in, in horrible uh, weather conditions. So we need to do everything in our power to protect these training requirements, and I have pledged to the families of Flight 3407, along with my colleague uh, from Buffalo, Representative Higgins, and all Americans who use air travel that I will fight to protect their safety. This is a bipartisan issue, and I'm proud to work with my colleagues across the aisle to ensure that these training hours remain in place as is. We owe it to the victims to do everything in our power to these to the airlines, large and small, and owe it to their customers who are entrusting us with their lives. So thank you very much for your time, and I yield back.